long too. Welcome back to part two of Sports Card Show interview show with Chris from Infinite Investment Game. If you enjoyed the first part, if you haven't, please go check out that video. We had a lot to talk about in the first part. Second part, we're kicking off. We're talking a little about the Asian market influence, kind of illogic versus logic of the hobby. Chris, you were making a point. Um, we we're talking about, and go ahead. Uh, wait, you kind of cut off for a second. I'm sorry. We were talking about the, um, what was it we were talking about? You were, um, the differences in the hobby, the different um, views that you see, right? Different perspectives on things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Patrick Big David was right. Um, he was on uh, oh, the Sports Cars Live. It's, it's a it's a guy who's been in the hobby for a while. He's like a ball guy. I can't remember. Sports um, Cars Live, Jeremy. Jeremy Lee? I think so. Yeah. Um, I think Patrick Big David. And this was when um, the Michael Jordan car sold to um, sold for $720,000 in the same day. Yeah. He was yeah. just like... Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, yeah, that's not a thirty thousand dollar car, but that's definitely not a seven hundred twenty thousand dollar car. He was just basically saying, like, in the economy that we're in, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Just because it's like three hundred and eighteen of those things, um, and that gives a, that value. <clears throat> like the Wayne Gretzky selling for over a million, five million, what that makes sense. And he, he predicts that's going to be eventually a forty million dollar car um, one day. Not anytime soon maybe 10 Why? 15 20 years what was the reason on the gretzky versus the jordan is it because of pop count or something or big the big part is pop count because it's pop too um okay. and i think a lot of people are getting confused with hockey and they think hockey is going to be a big thing a lot of these fringe sports people are getting into um they're thinking about like if i would have got into basketball earlier like in 18 19 you would have these huge games yeah. and so since you know, people have already gotten to baseball, basketball, and in some instances, football. Um, now I need to go into these other frames. Hockey, soccer, really UFC. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, and I hold that. And then the cars I hold will be the next million dollar, hundred thousand dollar card, ninety thousand dollar card. Um, most likely it's not going to work that way. <laughs> um, yeah. um, but soccer has a good chance if you're buying, I don't know, Pele, Maradona, maybe. Um, the rarest stuff for that, the highest grades. Um, but also people need to understand that like only uh, if someone's trying to invest, let's be real. And this 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 same thing that's going on in sports cars is going on in all kind of collectibles. Yeah, all um, the like, yeah. Pokemon, Funko Pop, whatever it might be. Rated antiques, currency. Yeah. I know somebody who who had uh, buys antique guns when I was in the Air Force. And they bought a gun around $1,700, and now it's like $7,000. Um, so there's been this bit of a craze. The, the thing with, with this pop culture stuff, and cars are kind of considered pop culture, but like baseball and then vintage basketball and football are entering this as well, where they're kind of becoming like collectible antiques, like valuable antiques as well, and they have a lot of history behind it for yep. like the T206 the yep. or whatever. Um when it comes to coins and currency and stuff like that, that has history behind it. Um, and there's a historical thing that keeps it stronger. Um, a lot of- There's also there's also regulations on currency, right? That, that keep that, and, and even postage stamps have regulations, right? Like if you counterfeit a stamp, I think you're violating a federal law, right? You yeah. counterfeit a coin or create fake coins, you're gonna go to jail. You create a fake Jordan, no one cares. <laughs> yeah. Know? In fact, I, I was thinking back to those big transactions that took place. I remember in some group talking about how, to me, that seemed like the easiest way to launder money, <laughs> right? You want to clean some money up, you send it through. I'll go ahead and buy a $700,000 Jordan, and I can clean up, you know, a million dollars in dirty cash. With my, it just, it seemed weird when those transactions took place. And I'd also love to know, do those people think that that value will ever come back? Like, if you're holding that card at 700000 do you think that's going to come back? I don't. I don't think that will ever come back. So that's an interesting question. So um, I do think a lot of collectibles and certain cards will eventually go back to, up in value. Um, I will say 99% of cards won't. And, and here's something to keep in mind. Every year they're making new product and they're bringing yeah. new product. And they're going to be 
new stars and new superstars. And also these companies are smart. They know if they make a chase card or a chase product, it's going to sell. Um, so a lot of people are going out and buying these sealed wax, especially the newer stuff, and they're hoarding it like <laughs> um, in their closet. If everybody's doing it, then it's not going to be valuable. No, I agree with you 100%. Like everybody thinks it's that sealed wax is going to be the future. It's no longer the future because everybody thinks it. Just like, again, if you look at like back in the 80s and 90s, why does everybody have factory sets? Because everybody back in the 80s and 90s are storing factory sets. You know what I'm saying? Like that game's already been played, um, which is why, again, I, I think I said this earlier on, a, maybe it was live when I was talking to somebody. I just think if, if it doesn't have an autograph, if it doesn't have some type of relic or providence to it, it's going to have no real value in the future. And I even mean that with these rare one-on-ones and, and these, you know, gold cards, because they're just manufacturally made. And I, here's my argument that 20 years from now, counterfeiting will be so much better. You know what I'm saying? What a little device will just create me one. Like, how are you going to spend the time and the money and the effort to really want to sort through, is this gold ready, you know, refractor of LeBron James from first year prism, any money? And they're like, no, they're going to look at the autographs LeBron James left. They're going to look at the jerseys, the relics, the sneakers, other things that he left the legacy. A company making a manufactured piece of plastic, I just don't think, I just think logic in the brain 30 years now, look back and go, that was funny. Look what these people did. <laughs> you know, I just don't know. I mean, there will be some people who have value. But I just cannot see holding the same. Yeah, so um, that is a good point. Also, you have to look, especially people, if people are trying to hold stuff long term, like the popularity of sports change too, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Back in the day, people didn't care about basketball in the 70s and 80s like that. Um, and that's that's a good I, point. People don't realize they that. Do. They just really, in the 80s, here's a, a mind-blowing fact, man. In the 80s, the first game that was televised live was the, um, the Celtics, the Magic Johnson, Larry Bird finals. Before that, finals were recorded and played late after hours. That should blow people's mind. Think about that. These the professional league was recorded and they played after hours for people. It wasn't until those gentlemen made the game prime time. And even then, the prime time, it wasn't like they were getting, you know, the best night. It took forever for basketball to get the momentum and the money. It just didn't have it. Didn't have the sponsorships. Like Magic Johnson signed the million dollar contract in the 80s was big deal, man. And that was a one million dollar contract or maybe a million dollar for 20 years. Something something was over a million dollars that blew people away. Um, but you're right. People just didn't care about basketball cards. They just didn't. <laughs> and also the thing with baseball is going to be interesting to see. I do think certain people like Jackie Robinson, Hank Aaron, the T206, those cards will hold value. Maybe Willie Mays. And I think in baseball, there's like a silver rice almost element as well to it, um, where that makes it kind of more historic. Um, but I think most of baseball and i'm looking at demographics um yep. and a lot of people aren't looking at this and gary v thinks it's going to be bigger because international a lot of people are thinking a lot of international people are going to get in cards but cards is mostly a cultural thing in america um there is in other places but it's not as big and things can grow but i do think most collectors are born they're not made yeah. Um, and when people were thinking like, oh, well, Fanatics is going to get in two years from now, and a bunch of people are going to want to buy cards, there would be maybe people who transient kind of buy cards and stuff, but they're going to spend five, maybe $10, $20 on, on, on cards and maybe buy packs of cards. Um, and there would be some people, I, I do kind of feel like, let's say with sports card invest, because there's different people who different things, things. I think Gary B, he hasn't caught talk about sports cars as much lately but i think he knows it's on a downswing even if you go back to stuff he talked about in 2018 and 19 he said he thought things were going to last you know the boom was going to last three maybe four years something like that um and then there's probably gonna be a down period and then you know it'll go back up maybe five ten twenty years something like that um well, if you look at Dave, vegas dave he said 2024 um and then also Patrick David kind of talked about, he doesn't know exactly when, but he said it's only going to be a few years where it's going to be super big. And it's going to be a big thing because a lot of these um, investment stocks, Electable Rally, Otis has gotten into it. 
Um, but that's going to be like super high end. That's like 0.1% of the market yep. or whatever that's going to maintain. Um, but the rest of that other stuff it is not really going to be valuable. And the thing with China, like people need to look at demographics because most of the world, the demographics, most people aren't really having kids because kids are expensive. Um, in most parts of the world now, especially when the country becomes industrialized. Um,